So is region a confounder between systolic blood pressure and weight? How would we answer that? Um, if we were doing this um, you know, using dplyr, we'd probably want to start by grouping by a region and then calculating some kind of correlation between systolic blood pressure and weight. And if we're doing this with um, a plot, it's actually not that different. So in a sense, this is my grouping where I want to have a separate plot for each of the regions. And looking at this, it looks like the relationship is pretty much the same in all the regions. I mean, the blob of points is, you know, has some very minor differences between the regions, but the overall shape looks pretty much identical for each of the four regions. So how do I get this plot? So first, you know, this is called the stratified analysis, which we've already discussed. So we start with patients, we add ggplot, and we map uh, systolic blood pressure to X and weight to Y, just like we did before, recognizing that we probably should have reversed those axes uh, given our hypothesis. And then what we're going to do here is add geom jitter, just like we did before, hopeful that this would solve the overplotting issues, but clearly it does not. And then to get the four separate plots, we don't need to filter or do anything like that in dplyr to generate the plots individually. Well, we certainly could have done it that way just by adding a facet wrap uh, function where we have tilde region tells the ggplot to basically generate four different plots, one for each region. And what facet wrap means is, you know, wrap those around. So when you get to the, um, you know, the, the plots basically run into the right margin of the screen, then go to the bottom left and start making new plots. And in the window that I ha had open where I generated this plot, it just happened to be the case that there was really only enough room for two columns. And so it knew to, you know, write Midwest, Northeast, and then to wrap around to uh, South and West. And you'll notice that this is organized by alphabetical order for the different regions. Then, of course, we can add labels just like we did before and the theme just to make it look nice and clean. So this is amongst the most complicated plots that we're going to need to generate for this class. Um, and if you are you know, thinking about your midterm project where you have to uh, do a simple and a stratified analysis, the only difference most likely in your code to get this stratified analysis is the addition of a facet wrap function. Now, how would you answer if age is a confounder between systolic blood pressure and weight? Now, one difference between age and region, obviously, is that age is quantitative and continuous, whereas region only had four possible values. So there are ways of keeping age as a continuous value and still evaluating its effect as a confounder. But one easy way um, to start to look at this is to break age up into a set of categories um, and try to see whether the relationship between blood pressure and weight changes um, as you look at different age groups. So in a sense, this is what I might want, where I've got uh, you know, separate plots for children, adolescents, adults, and older adults. But how the heck do I get this plot? Um, the other difference between this plot and the last plot is that I've got a smooth line, almost like a best fit line that I'm seeing here. So how the heck did I generate this? I still start with patience. Um, but because the categories of child, adolescent, adult, and older adult don't exist in my data, I first got to create those as a new column in my data set. How do I go about doing that? I could use mutate, and I know that I have to use mutate to create the new column. But inside of mutate, I know that I could use if else, which would help me define a, a single condition where if the condition is met, I assign certain values. If it's not met, I assign other values. But that wouldn't solve my problem here because I've got four possible options. So the way to approach this is to start with mutate, 
create the age category variable, which I'm going to call age cat equals, and then to use case when. And case when is a way of recoding your data when you have more than two possible categories. So here I basically say if age is less than or equal to 11, assign child um, uh, to the age category. If age is less than or equal to 17, then assign this as an adolescent. And remember that when we use case when, the very first condition that gets met is the one that gets assigned. So even though a 10-year-old is less than or equal to 11 and is also less than or equal to 17, because the first condition was met, that child would get assigned as a child uh, in the age category variable. So next we can look at uh, you know, assigning adults using the same logic. And then just recall that the truth uh, that's written here is basically the equivalent of else in other languages. So if none of the above conditions are met, then definitely just automatically assign it to be an older adult is what this is uh, with what that true is saying. So if you're you know less if you're not less than or equal to 11, not less than or equal to 17, not less than or equal to 65, then you automatically will get labeled as an older adult. Great. So now we've got those categories created. And now it's easy. Now we do the same exact thing we did before, where we create the ggplot, do our mappings, add the geom jitter, add the geom smooth to get the smooth line. And remember that because we specified the mappings inside of ggplot, geom smooth already knows what those mappings are. So you don't have to remap them inside of each of the geometric objects. Then we facet by age category. Um, so because we already created age category, we can facet by it. So we do facet wrap tilde age category. And then we add the labels and the theme. And this gives us the plot on the top right. You might be wondering, you know, why am I kind of doing all this overkill to show you the labels and the theme? And I'm just showing this to you because this is how I actually do all my plots. So all I'm showing you is, is that, you know, if you've got if you're 50% of the way there by using uh, the mapping and the geometric object and maybe the faceting, it's only two more things you have to add to have your uh, plot look production ready and kind of look really nice. So now let's answer a couple of other questions which don't necessarily directly relate to our case study. So one question you might have is, does sex distribution change by region? And the way to answer this, I think, is actually to use a stacked bar chart where all the bars are a fixed height. This way, I'm actually able to answer the actual question I had, which is, does the proportion of men to, to women differ across the regions? And the answer is uh, no, based on looking at this specific type of bar chart. So how do I generate this type of bar chart? I start with patients. I add a ggplot. Uh, that the patience that comes to the right of ggplot is a mistake. So consider that, pretend that's not there, and the following comma is also not there. Then I have uh, my aesthetic inside of the ggplot variable where I specify that region is on the x-axis, and sex uh, is assigned to the fill aesthetic, such that the, the fill color is going to be uh, different based on the different values of sex. And then I say that I want a, a bar plot by specifying G on bar. And then remember, if you want all the, you know, if you want the uh, bars to fill the screen, you want them to be all the way to the top and equal, then you have to specify position equals fill. This position equals fill has nothing to do with the fill aesthetic that I used above. It's a specific type of position that says I want each of the bars to fill the screen. Note again that I did not have to calculate the proportion here. I didn't have to first do a mutate to calculate or, you know, or a group by summarize to calculate the proportion. Just the fact that I used G on bar with position equals fill did that for me. I could have also viewed the distribution using a heat map. Um, but if you look at the story being told by this heat map, it's actually not answering this question of does the sex distribution change by region. 
because this plot helps me figure out that there's a lot of women who live in the south in my data set and that's kind of the most prominent finding is the ratio of men to women the same is not something i can really answer looking at this because we're not able as humans to really process uh, ratios in you know color gradients that's just not a good skill that we have so but to make this plot we would start with patients we would make the same gg plot with the same mappings in fact because we're still mapping sex to fill um, we're not mapping sex along the y-axis and then we specify geom bin 2d and doing that automatically will uh you know create this uh heat map but just remember we didn't map sex to the y-axis we just decided that it would be a different color and ggplot did the rest for us and figured out that if they're different colors they've got to be at different places in space and so it moved them up along the y-axis just like it did for uh, the bar charts now we've looked at this chart several times but just as a refresher if we wanted to look at how the distribution of sex changes by region we could also do this as a bar chart with the with the uh, rectangles or bars side by side and it's basically the same code with you know the same mistake that i made uh, so pretend that the patients next to the ggplot on the right is not there as well as the comma um, and the only difference here is that i'm using g on bar position equals dodge instead of position equals fill and in some sense this plot is actually telling a similar story to my heat map because the easiest thing to make out from this plot is that there's a lot of women who live in the south which was the same finding that stood out to me in the heat map if you want to look at whether the weight distribution changes by region region is a categorical variable and weight is a continuous variable and remember that when we compare a categorical and a continuous variable, one of the most effective ways we can do that is using a box plot. So this is an example of how we might um, arrive at a box plot, which basically shows that no, the relationship between, uh, you know, or the distribution of weight doesn't really seem to differ all that much by region. So how do we get this plot? Um, we start with patients. Let's, let's take a look at the X and Y axes and the fill colors. So we know that region has to go on the X axis. Weight has to go on the Y axis. But region also determines the color of the box plot. And more specifically, it determines the fill because it's what's inside the box plot that's changing in color. So. In order to do that, we make a ggplot. And when we specify our mappings, region actually gets mapped to two different things. It gets mapped to the x-axis, and separately, we map it to the fill aesthetic, whereas weight just needs to get uh, mapped to the y-axis. So realize that you know we didn't have to color the bar plots differently, because just by looking at the x-axis, you, you can tell which of those box plots belongs to which region. But if we wanted to color them in separately, you can assign the same variable to multiple different aesthetics to kind of emphasize uh, that variable even more. So here we add G on box plot, and that's all we need to get the plot uh, above is just these uh, three lines. We could have also used a different type of plot. So we talked about uh, box plots, but Let's say we looked at uh, you know patients, then ggplot, x equals region, y equals weight, and fill equals region, so the same code, and then added the geom violin aesthetic. This would give us effectively the same information, but as a violin plot. And what a violin plot is that each of those areas is actually the same between all the regions, and the height or in this case, I guess it's the width because it's along the, uh, you know, how wide the um, each of those violins looks tells you where the peaks are in the data. So one nice thing about a violin plot is that 
if you have bimodal data, you'll actually be able to see that in a violin plot where you might have missed it in a box plot. And just like we had when we looked at our uh, density plot and histogram of weight, we can see that weight is in fact bimodal because there is a part of the violin that's wide closer to around 25 pounds and then another part around 150 pounds that's wide, telling us that you know weight is bimodal. If weight was uniformly or had a normal distribution, rather, uh, you would only see one area where the violin is wide and otherwise, otherwise it would be symmetric on either side. We could also just have looked at the density plot and just colored them in a little bit differently for each of the four regions. And we can see that the density plot basically overlaps perfectly for each of the four regions, you know, give or take a little bit. And because this plot is conveying the same information as the last couple of plots, it's almost identical to generate this. The only thing I changed is swapped out the geom box plot or the geom uh, violin plot with geom density. Because the distribution is completely overlapping, you would have only seen the kind of topmost distribution that was drawn last on the screen if I left it just at geom density. So in order to appreciate and be able to kind of see through um, each of those curves, um, I did want to fill those in a different color, but then I spe specified an alpha of one over three, which basically makes those look a little bit more transparent so that you can see through them. So we've shown how you can map kind of two or three variables to pretty much any kind of plot just by using a combination of facets, uh, different aesthetics, um, and different types of uh, geometric objects. But really, the sky is the limit. And you know, sure, when you're talking about a scatter plot, or you're talking about a bubble chart or a histogram, that you know, it might be easier to generate just using a very simple package where it's like a specific package for a, you know, a function for histogram and a separate function for a box plot. But let's look at this plot right here, which is pretty darn complicated. This plot is looking at the relationship between weight and systolic blood pressure, stratified by sex and stratified separately by region. It's drawing the points there um, where the points are uh, you know, not fully opaque. They're a little bit more transparent to try to make the overlap points uh, more obvious where the points are most dense. And also there's a best fit line drawn. Uh, and my takeaway from looking at this is that regardless of whether you stratify by sex or, or um, by region or any combination of the two, the relationship between weight and systolic blood pressure basically looks roughly linear. Um, based on the actual kind of looking at those points. And the best fit line, when you fit it, looks like it has the same slope throughout all of those uh, different plots. Without ggplot, there would be no way I could effectively tell someone how to create this plot without a lot of customization and a lot of extra work on my part. So if we wanted to actually generate this particular plot, how do we go about doing it? So the story, like I said here, is that this relationship is the same regardless of which combination of sex and region that you look at. But, you know, would I present this kind of a plot to a um, someone who is, you know, is not uh, literate in, uh, you know, data visualization? Probably not. I mean, I think there's almost too much going on in this plot, but it is a very compact way to, you know, look at multiple confounders in a single plot. Okay, so let's try to generate this together. We'll start with patience. We'll uh, add a ggplot and again, uh, ignore the patience that is just to the right of ggplot, that's a mistake. We'll specify the mappings where x is mapped to the uh, weight variable and y is mapped to the SBP variable. Um, I mapped color to age here, so actually the um, I, you know, the 
brighter points appear to be those uh, that belong to older individuals, and the darker points are those that are younger individuals. That's probably not a very good choice because I don't want to necessarily draw that distinction in my data. It doesn't really even functionally matter. And it makes my plot a little bit harder to interpret. But this just shows you that, you know, just because you have options available to you doesn't mean that you should exercise them in every single plot. Then I added geom point where I specified a size of 0.5. So I shrunk all the points and I made the points more transparent by decreasing the alpha to one over 20. And just recognize that, you know, size and alpha um, are not mappings. Those are actually um, just fixed assignments because they apply to all the points. So far, this is just a very simple plot with, you know, of the sort that we've done before. The really major change that we're going to show is how we faceted this. Remember that if we were to use facet wrap, we would be faceting along one variable. This is actually faceting simultaneously for, along two variables, sex and region. So, um, and the other thing here is that the line that we show is actually a straight line. It's a linear regression line and not a smooth curve. So, this is just to let you know that you know geom smooth has a set of functions and helpers inside of it. Uh, one of them is method equals lm, which tells geom smooth to run the linear model on this and fit a linear regression line. And then instead of using facet wrap, here I use facet grid. And now maybe it makes begins to make sense why there's a tilde in facet wrap. It's because in facet grid depending on which side of the tilde my variable is on, will determine whether the variable that I'm stratifying by is expressed on the, uh, you know, as rows or as columns. And so the way this works is it's row tilde column. So if, you know, you're to the left of the tilde, then each of those regions gets a separate row, just like you can see in this plot. And if a variable is to the right of the tilde, it gets a separate column. And because facet wrap only works with one variable, the variable is always to the right of the tilde. But um, with facet grid, you know, you have more choice because you can stratify by multiple variables. So I purposely didn't show you facet grid earlier because I don't think you're actually going to need to uh, use facet grid most of the time because again, it muddles the message and it's, you're looking at, you know, almost too many things. But um, now that you've learned facet grid, facet wrap, and these other functions, you've pretty much seen every single possible thing that you would ever need to see to generate any kind of a ggplot. Um, and the only things that you're really going to need to tweak and change are how you want to do the mappings, because that's what will dramatically change the look of your plot, even if, you know, all you're doing is changing uh, which variable maps to what and which aesthetic. Um, and so I think that's where the power of ggplot comes from.